what it do. I'm Camille Davis, and you have found yourself at the Pack a Day podcast on the YouTube side of things. Here, I'm coming to you after a disappointing Packers loss in the game where the Packers outgained the Lions 411 yards to 261. You would not expect the Packers to lose that particular game, but indeed they did. They lost 24 14 to the Lions at home in Lambeau. They were once again outclassed by an NFC North foe at home. The final score makes it look a bit more respectable than what it really was. But listen, the Packers went up 3-0 and and then the Lions scored 24 unanswered points. And you look at the game script and you're like, well, what went wrong for the Packers? A lot of familiar stories in this game for the Packers. Penalties, you got to start there. Penalties, again, a familiar factor for the Packers. They had 10 penalties against the Lions for 67 yards. This is the third game this season where the Packers have had at least 10 penalties in the game. Far too many. They've had at least five games so far this season, including the three games I just mentioned, where they had at least seven penalties against them. They had eight against Houston. They had seven against the Rams. They had eight against the Vikings. They had 10 against the Titans. They had 10 against Philly. And now they had 10 against the Lions. You cannot be that undisciplined in a game. You have got to play a clean game. You cannot impose self-inflicted harm on yourself. In addition to the penalties, they had drops. Again, another familiar refrain about what is going wrong with this team. When things are going wrong, too many drops. There were at least five drops, possibly six and I'm, I'm saying at least. So let's say at least five because if it's six, yeah, it was at least five. At least five drops from the receivers. Drops in situations that would, would have moved the chains, situations where it would have resulted in a touchdown for the Packers. You had three bad snaps between Jenkins and Love. This is when you miss Josh Myers, especially in the game with the elements. You're swapping your offensive line around. You got Jenkins playing center. In a, in a week where he didn't get to practice with Love. You know, Love didn't practice this week. So, yeah, just some unfamiliarity there. You had two back-to-back bad snaps in the third quarter. The Packers ended up settling for three on that particular drive, and that got the score at 24-6. to six. And shout-out to, to Wilson, Emmanuel Wilson. He recovered that first bad snap there, and he negated a big loss for the Packers by being able to get the ball at least somewhat near the line of scrimmage. You had bad decision-making. You had that Jordan Love pick six right before halftime. A situation where you cannot do that. You cannot give the ball away in that situation. You're trying to run a a two-minute offense, really like one minute, because they didn't have that much time at that particular junction in the game. Second play. You, you're you're under pressure. You're rolling to your right a little bit. You're trying to make something happen. Nothing there. You're trying to throw it away, but the throwaway was too soft. It just lofts in the air. It's picked off. It's 60 other way right before halftime. That takes the game from a manageable, okay, 10-3 to three to 17-3 to three real quick. You get the ball back again. You can't capitalize because on your last uh, drive trying to score before the half, Chris Brooks doesn't get out of bounds during the last drive of that first half there. And then the Packers have to use their final timeout with like 15 seconds left on the clock, changes the game script completely in that situation. The next play is a deep pass to Reed. He gets it at like the uh, Lions 11 or something like that, but they don't have enough time to do anything with it. They couldn't get to the line and spike it. Jordan Love seemed to come up a little bit limp on that play. He was hobbling a bit after the game. He said he was fine. He said he didn't have any problems in the game. So be it. So be it. I, I hear that a lot with Giannis. Where he's like, I'm fine. I'm in no pain. I'm fine. But you can see there's some pain there. Regardless of such, again, just bad decisions. Bad decisions for the Packers. And then on top of that, too, when they were in favorable situations or got favorable situations, they weren't really able to capitalize in those times either. Think about that Brian Branch play where he has a targeting flag uh, for the targeted hit at Bo Melton, which I don't know why he was trying to argue that one. He gets 15 on that one. New York throws him out. They say he's ejected. You got to go. You got to go. 
he argues, he flips off the crowd or the refs, whoever he's flipping off, he gets another 15-yard penalty on his way out. The Packers were gifted 30 yards on that drive. The very next play, it's a false start. <laughs> they walk away with no points on that drive. It was Brandon McManus's first missed field goal of the day or of his Packer career, I should say, at that point. And again, it was windy. Yes, it was rainy, but it's just so disappointing to get in that situation where their best defensive player uh, is out of the game and you get no points. The Packers really didn't take too much advantage of him being out the game, period, after that point, because that happened in like the first half. Didn't, didn't get too much from it after that. And the bottom line is with this Packers team today against the Lions, just weren't disciplined enough. They just weren't disciplined enough. They weren't able to take advantage of situations that they did have. And now the Packers are heading into the bye week with a 6-3 and three record. When they come out that bye, they're going to be facing the Chicago Bears when they get back to it. So at this point, you, you're frustrated, right? Because it's the same story. It's the same issues. It's different if this is the first time you've had drops or you had penalties and you're like, man, they just, they just didn't show up against a good team. But like you expect more of this team at this point, given what we saw at the end of last season and what we're seeing this year. The growth is still there. You have seen them perform better in the beginning of this season than they did at the beginning of last season. It's just you wanted that momentum to carry over from the end of last season into this season. I mean, Jordan Love has 10 interceptions at this point. He missed two games, two and a half, really, leading the league in interceptions. You want to see more. You want to see better. But heading into this bye, which comes at a really good time, you want to see them get healthy. hope Jordan Love continues to recover. Same for Josh Jacobs. I know he was battling with a little injury coming into this game. You could see him at times coming off the field a little slow. I want to see him recover. I want to see Ja get back. Need Jair Alexander back. Need Evan Williams back healthy. So you hope the bye can help them uh, continue to get healthy as the Packers prepare for the second half of the season. Last year, the second half of the season was a big time for the Packers where they really turned it on. Hoping to see more of the same from this year's iteration of the team as well. Continue to build off momentum, learn from mistakes, and be better. The talent is there. They just have to be disciplined. They just have to be able to take advantage of situations presented to them. So make sure you keep it locked into the Pack a Day podcast on the YouTube side of things, as well as on the audio side, wherever you get your podcast, you can find some exclusive Pack a Day content there as well. So make sure you keep it locked. And as always, go Pack Go.